Hey guys, welcome back. I have a handful of projects I'm going to be doing over the next few days, so I figured I would take you guys along with me. I'm actually going to be painting this door. It's my shed door. My husband took it off for me to make it a little bit easier. So I'm going to get this painted, which I'm really excited about. I went back and forth with colors for quite some time, and I finally decided to do green which I'm really excited about, but also kind of unsure about because I was leaning really toward neutrals, which I would still consider a green and neutral. Um, but if I hate it, I can just paint over it. But I stumbled across information that when it comes to an east facing door in feng shui, it means growth and new beginnings. And I just love that for the garden. So I figured let's go ahead and give green a shot because I kept going toward green. I was like, why? And I thought it'd also be really nice during winter when there's no green in this space for there still to be a green door. So we're going to paint this green. I chose like a sagier color of green. My husband and my sister also agreed that they liked this green. I brought a handful of greens home. So since this has like a texture to it, I don't know what like these little squares on the door are called. If you do, let me know. Um, I'm going to go through with a paintbrush and paint that first. And I'm going to go through and roll. I think that'll be the best way to do it. I don't know. I've never, again, painted a door before, but we're about to find out how this is going to go. I don't know if you guys can see or not, but right there, there's a bird bath. Uh, that's another project we're going to be doing is cleaning this bird bath and putting it out. I got this bird bath for $19 at an auction. I've been on the lookout for a bird bath for like, I'd say like three weeks. I <laughs> saw TikTok and I was like, I need a bird bath. There's nothing else to say other than I needed it. So went on the hunt. I originally went to the garden center and our garden center was selling bird baths for $300. And I was like, I can, I can find a, a bird bath somewhere else. So I went on our local auctions cause I really wanted, um, a uh, gosh, was it called a concrete bird bath? I really didn't want just a plated or I don't know. I really wanted a nice concrete bird bath. So it will find that at an auction for 19 bucks. I was super hyped. Cause I think it's also super cute. All right, so first coat is done. I'm liking the way it's looking. Um, I'm pretty sure it's going to need a second coat though. So I'll see you guys in the morning. It's the next day, good morning. I'm going to get a second coat on this. So um, I was kind of right about the whole brush thing in the beginning. There's a few areas that you can see the brush strokes, but for the most part, um, it looks good. I should just, I shouldn't have used the brush at all. Um, going over it with the roller really helped even it out, but it just was kind of, there's like a little bit of a weight line, but I don't think you'll be able to tell after I do the second coat. Again, I've never painted a door before. I don't know. I am really liking how the green is looking though. I think it's going to look really cute. So as I was painting, my phone overheated, but I got the second coat done. And here very shortly, I'm going to be flipping it over and doing the other side. But as I was painting in the corner of my eye, I saw something bright uh, yellow. And I was like, there's no way that that is the first loofa flower. And it is. So we have five loofas already forming on this plant, which I feel like is earlier than last year, but I'm so excited it's flowering. I honestly can't believe it to be honest with you, but we are almost into June. While I have this little window, I'm also going to go ahead and collect the eggs. All right. Doop, doop, doop. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. All right, we got seven. <laughs> at least as of now. I've had one girl laying a little bit later in the day, so I'll have to check back. Also gonna get this chamomile harvested. I didn't realize how many more blooms I had. I've been coming through and harvesting this plant every three or four days, and I am getting so much tea at the moment, which I am so excited about. I've been waiting until about midday as the dew kind of gets off and the flowers fully open up to harvest. Well, that was a good amount of blooms. Let's see how many strawberries I have to pick today. All of my blooms are starting to diminish and I'll probably get another round here pretty soon, but I'm starting to get a little less fruit. 
This one has a little bit of a nibble to it. Birds can have it. Whenever I launch one of those, I feel like I'm playing outfield and softball again. Ooh, these are beautiful berries. Not too shabby, this was my best looking berry here. This cage has made such difference with getting a harvest. I think I actually have enough here to make more scones. I made scones this week. I made strawberry scones for the first time. I ate all these scones within a 24 hour period. They were so good. So I think I'm addicted to strawberry scones now, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this inside. So guys, it's the next day. Um, I'm obsessed with the door. Let me know your thoughts below. I'm actually going to be trying to get a handful of things done today. We'll see how much I get accomplished because I really did not think the door was going to take me as long as it did um, because I know nothing about painting, clearly. So anyway, today I'm going to be getting this bird bath clean. There is the smallest crack in it, which I really don't think will matter much. It doesn't go all the way through or anything, but I am going to get this clean today. I even have a solar fountain for it, but I am so excited about the bird bath. I think it's going to be so much fun. So I randomly came across this information that I also wanted to tell you about because I think this is so interesting and I'm going to be really interested to see if I have any type of difference this year. So I started to read about deterrence for tomatoes when it comes to birds and a bird bath was actually suggested. So. Most of the time, apparently, when birds attack your tomatoes during like that peak summer, July, August, it's because water is scarce and they are thirsty, which made total sense to me. So by having a bird bath in your garden, it's actually supposed to really help that whole situation. So I'll be so curious to see if that's the case. My husband is going to finish up power washing. He got my bird bath all leveled out over here. So I got my solar fountain and there's a few different attachments on the way you can do the fountain. So I'm going to see which one I like best. I feel like I need a little bit more water. Hold on. Look over and it's like really working. Okay, maybe it just needed a second. Ooh, I kind of like that one. I'm probably gonna like all of them. I'm just gonna say that up front. See, I think these tall ones with the wind is going to be too much. I like how that one was more out. So, okay, not a fan of that one. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't like that one either. I'm so excited to see a bird take a bath in here for the first time. Yeah, I expect all of these to be really similar. So I'm gonna go with that one. I really liked when we first started. That is so cute. And I did all of this under $40, which is even more exciting because I didn't think I was going to be able to do any of this under $40 and somehow I managed it. So I'm hyped about that. I'm gonna be on the lookout for, for a bird. Which speaking of birds, I was telling my husband, I randomly saw an orange and black bird. So I Googled it and it was my first Oriole that I've ever seen in my entire life. And it just keeps visiting my backyard. So hopefully I can catch him. So I have this old oil barrel and the handle completely rusted off. So we're going to try to take off the rest of this stuff and use this base for the chickens to be able to dust bathe in. That was my idea because it kind of looked like a little tub and I thought it would, it would be cute.
There we go. It looks like a little claw foot tub without claw feet. All right, so the last thing I'm going to do this evening is actually get a few more peppers planted. I had a few that didn't take, and this was originally going to be my second succession wave. I have a few more started in the basement, but I have a bunch of tomatoes here for once my um, garlic is harvested. Some tomatoes will go there and also green beans, but I ended up having two of my paprika plants just be stunted and they haven't grown at all. And then one of my jalapeno plants decided to die the moment it got planted. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill those gaps. I also tried to direct sow some peppers right here and here as well. So it's actually blank. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get all these peppers uh, planted. They'll do better outside than they will in my basement. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna get that done. Like this one here, like I'm just gonna pull it. It hasn't done anything. This one here, no. Those are both dead. So I'm gonna get these planted real fast. I have some paprika and some jalapeno. I also have some catnip started for a few people and then some basil. I'm really excited to get my garlic harvested. It will be harvested oh, about a week and a half, two weeks. I'm keeping an eye on it. It's already dying back. All the scapes have formed and I've actually stopped watering as of now. We do have some rain in the forecast and everything, but I actually didn't know this which shockingly enough, um, I was doing more garlic research and it suggests that you cut watering one to two weeks before you harvest because it will actually um, change like your curing and storing. And I was like, well, that makes sense just because it would be drier in the ground. Last year, I unfortunately didn't have that luxury. I had to pull it right after we got a bunch of rain because it was time, but I still had really good length on my garlic. So that's really exciting. But one thing a lot of people get confused on is succession planting. And when my garlic gets Cold, I will have three beds that will be completely open and that's mid-June and between that date and my first expectant frost is roughly 130 days you can throw all sorts of stuff in 130 days so I currently have eight um, tomato plants here these are all romas and then I have some basil some more peppers like I said I'm also going to be doing a, a bunch of direct sowing of green beans as well one of my favorite things to always have on hand is green beans because once you pull it you can always throw green beans in green beans is a really quick crop they mature within 55 to 65 days so even if you are in a shorter growing season typically you can harvest something and get away with a second wave of beans and some of my um which speaking of like two of my garlic beds will actually be planted out three separate times throughout this growing season so they started out with garlic and then they'll turn around into green beans and then they'll turn around into like broccoli and cabbage for fall and winter but also look how amazing all of my other paprika and bell pepper plants are doing also my cayennes are doing really well all my peppers are really doing great minus the few that ended up dying Good morning, guys. I'm so excited. I just saw my first bird in the bird bath. I'm sure there was a bird yesterday, but I wasn't out here a lot yesterday. I was really busy, so super hyped about that. Also, speaking of yesterday, I actually went to the plant nursery and I got my first elderberry plant. So me and my husband were walking around and I do need to get another elderberry type to be able to cross pollinate to get the berries. Um, so I'm on the lookout for that, but this is a beautiful, beautiful plant. This one is called Instant Karma and it has like this beautiful variegation on it. These things can get huge, like six to eight feet, like tall, wide, even taller than that. So I'm trying to figure out exactly where I'd want to put it, but with the new door color, I think it looks so beautiful over here near the shed. I just don't know if I really have enough space right here. I'm also thinking I have a honeysuckle plant over in that corner, but it might this might do better in that corner and it'd be really big and it'd be really pretty when it flowers and that corner might do really well. Or where I currently have the broccoli in that eight by four garden bed in the other corner, I think that might work too. Um, 
I did tell my husband, I'm like, if we put it here, we could put it in our garden bed, but I would have to move all of this. And this is all perennial. I, the yarrow looks like a crazy mess because it's so tall, but it is blooming right now and it's so beautiful. I'm actually going to pick some of that today, but figured I would take you guys along for this morning as well. I have a handful of things I need to do today. I really didn't get much done yesterday. I didn't even film yesterday. I planned to. It got really hot and then it rained. Um, and again, I was just busy all day. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to prune up some indeterminate tomatoes. I just did that with my San Morzano's here. Um, in a matter of a week and a half, they already have quite a few suckers on them. So they can get really, really ahead of you if you're not on top of it. Then I also need to finally clean all of my seed starting equipment, which I really don't want to do, but I keep putting it off and I don't need to be putting it off any further because we're going to be har we're going to be doing harvest pretty soon. I don't know if you can tell, but the garlic is really close to being ready. I pulled one the other day and it was close. At leaf three, it was died off. I typically pull the plants at leaf four and we are getting really close. You can tell they don't look too happy because they are completely dying back. But yeah, I'm just going to do various things and I figured I would take you guys along just since I've took you guys along for the rest of the week. Okay, so speaking of the bird bath, the one thing I did notice yesterday when I was back here for the little bit of time is that the bird bath really isn't holding water as well as it could because of that one little crack I mentioned. So my husband mentioned uh, getting some food grade silicone for it. So we're going to seal that up a little bit because there's no way it would, be, it would lose water like it currently is. At least I wouldn't think so. Okay, so I have a bunch of nursery pots and seedling trays here that I need to get clean. This is something I've been putting off far too long and I'm sick of looking at it. So I'm going to rinse these off, wash them a little bit. I have some Castile soap and water, a little scrub brush. If I need it, let them air dry. So this is important to do in between seasons, just to make sure your equipment stays clean. There's nothing growing on it. You're not introducing anything to your next year seedling in case there was an issue this year. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna knock this out because I don't want to do it. And I, yeah, so I just need, I need to start. I'm so happy that I finally got that done. Honestly, it was not that bad, especially compared to the last two years. I didn't have near as many nursery pots because I didn't do a lot of up potting and I did a lot more soil blocking this year. So that was ideal because I think that maybe, that probably took me two to three times longer in the previous year. So I was expecting that, but that honestly wasn't too bad. And I procrastinated that way too long. I wish I would have just got it done. Uh, and a lot of those trays stayed really clean too. So I'm really happy I went ahead and got that done. I feel so much better about getting that done. They were staring at me for far too long, so. Well, I got the first bouquet out of the garden. I did this cute little yarrow bouquet here. My mom actually moves back today or tomorrow. She was unsure when I talked to her last night, so I figured I'd pick them today, put them in the fridge, and if she decided to move back today, then uh, they'll be ready. But how pretty are these? I love making bouquets out of the garden. I actually don't need to use a lot of my yarrow this year. I grew the yarrow to make tinctures and I actually have enough yarrow tincture still to where I don't really need to worry about it. So I was actually going to hang dry um, a lot of yarrow bouquets this year, which I'm really excited about, but I'm gonna go put this in the fridge inside. That way, um, just depending if she wants to move today or tomorrow, I'll be ready for her. All right, so some of you guys know, I planted carrots here and then I had zucchini. I went ahead and pulled the zucchini because zucchini honestly is just so much of a pain for me with vine borer. So um, I went ahead and just pulled it. I think what my game plan is, if I do go ahead and grow it, is I'll probably be planting it in place of either the potatoes or somewhere where the onions are here in July. Hopefully at that point, my window for vine borer should be done and zucchini is also really fast. I had one of you guys suggest this to me last week. This is something I've tried in the past, but I think my timing window could have still been off. So I might give that a try. If you guys have any suggestions, let me know, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this uh, bed planted out with carrots still. So I am growing a pelleted variety called the, the, the Najoba 
from um, Johnny's. This is a hybrid variety that's pelleted. And I have to say, um, this is my first year doing pelleted and I really am enjoying the fact that I really didn't have to thin anything out. There is a few areas I'm going to go ahead and reseed. Um, but other than that, they germinated really well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plant out this whole bed with carrots. That way too, I will have two separate successions of carrots and I won't have all these carrots um, maturing all at the same time. One thing I am very much over in my garden is maples maple tree seedlings i have all of these fly off my tree at the beginning of spring and that's when i'm getting a lot of my planting done so i just have to pull up hundreds because it's more of a pain to kind of move them or pick them all up it's kind of easier to wait for them to germinate You guys know the dust bath that I made the chickens? Well, I thought some of them were using it yesterday and I just caught them using it just now. They get all shy when I get close to them when they're using it. I'm telling you, there are maple tree seedlings everywhere. There's over 20 right here alone, but I think this is where I'm going to go ahead and conclude today's video. It's getting sunny and warm, and I'm gonna knock out some weeding and then go in for the morning. But I hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with me for a few days while I did some garden projects. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.